I started Innovation a couple years ago, and um, the uh, I guess one of the questions they asked me was, what was my path to a career in technology? And, and how did Technovation come about? So to give you guys uh, an idea of where I came from, I was an Uber nerd. <laughs> And you can tell that by the size of my glasses, because you know, <laughs> the, the nerdy, nerdier you are, the bigger those glasses are. I grew up, what's that? They've shrunk now. They've shrunk now, yeah. So now it's like harder for me to claim my Uber nerd status, but um, bold and, and, uh, and big, right? Um, so I grew up in Boulder, Colorado, and um, I always really loved math and science, and so I went to, uh, kind of the mecca for, for nerdy math and science enthusiasts, which is MIT. Um, I loved it there. I majored in physics and math with computer science. Um, from MIT, I moved out here, um, and I came to Stanford to do my PhD in applied physics. So you guys are rolling your eyes. You're like, yes, uber nerd. <laughs> Not lying. Um, while I was at Stanford, um, I got married to my wonderful husband, Jonathan. Um, so how many of you guys know who Sheryl Sandberg is? Some, some of you folks, yeah. She's, um, she's the COO of Facebook. So Sheryl says that one of the most important things you can do for your career is who you choose for a partner. And I just want to mention that for me, that could not be more true. Um, my husband has been one of my biggest supporters, one of my biggest cheerleaders. And he's always encouraging me to, to go for it. So I wanted to give him a shout out. Um, we, uh, let's see, so we adopted a dog. Her name is Chutney. Um, she's also just amazing. Um, soon after I graduated from Stanford, I got a job at Microsoft. And this was my first foray into technology. So until that point, I had always thought of myself as a scientist. And while I really loved science, I really loved physics and math, I just felt like the pace of it was a little slow. I was working on this project, um, which I was all about like applied science. And so I was working on this project for, for a device that was going to supposedly make it into market seven years later. And I was like, wait a minute, seven years is a really long time. I just don't have time for that. I want to work on something that moves much faster. So I decided to go work at Microsoft. And um, I became a program manager and build products that were supposedly going to ship like every, you know, every year. So it was very exciting to me because it was like I was suddenly building something that people would use. And I was working on Microsoft TV, which how many of you guys have AT&T U-verse? Anybody? Anybody? So that's what um, Microsoft TV was building was, was the software that powers U-verse. So now some of you guys might be using um, a product that I worked on. So I thought that was really cool. But then after being there, oh shoot, I keep pressing the wrong button. So after being there for a while, I decided that things were a little too slow for me. A year was just a little too long and I wanted things to be even faster. And so I decided to take the plunge and join a startup. Um, so I joined AdMob, which is a mobile startup. And um, at that time, mobile was just starting to come about. This was 2007, which is like an eternity ago. This was before Android right when iPhone was launched, so it seems like a really long time ago. Um, people didn't really surf the web on their phones back then, crazy. Like all they used um, their phones for was, was you know, texting and maybe email if they had Blackberries. So this is like back in the day. And what was really cool about mobile, it was an emerging technology, and it was fast. Like we used to ship stuff every couple of months, and it was really exciting. Um, so while I was at AdMob, I had this amazing experience where I attended Startup Weekend. How many of you guys have heard of Startup Weekend? If you guys have heard of Startup Weekend, um, or if you haven't, it's called uh, startupweekend.org, I think is their website. Definitely check it out. Um, and what that does is they bring a bunch of people together for, um, for the weekend, and people pitch ideas for startups, and then people form teams around startup ideas. And then you spend a weekend working on the startup idea. And you get the experience of what it would be like to start a company, but all compressed to a weekend. So I, I attended Startup Weekend, and it was so exciting. I was like, wow, entrepreneurship is so amazing. If I had been exposed to it as a high school student, I might have really viewed my life differently. And wouldn't it be really cool to bring that experience to 
girls in high school just so they can have that experience of starting something. And so that's how the idea for Technovation came about. So after I started Technovation, um, I went on to work at LinkedIn because I'm a big data junkie, I guess you could say. I, I love drawing insights from data and I got this really amazing role at LinkedIn where I was a data scientist, which, and which meant that I got to look at just terabytes of data and figure out how to improve products, how to get users more engaged with LinkedIn, and um, lots of cool things. Um, while I was at LinkedIn, I had a baby girl. I put a picture of her in there because she's so cute. Um, and then recently, I've left LinkedIn to start my own company, which is now in stealth mode. For those of you guys who are too young to remember the stealth fighter, I don't know if that's even like a thing anymore, but it was like a huge <laughs> deal when I was growing up. So. So that was my path to a career in technology. Um, so I was telling a friend about this, our, our very own mentor, Nidhi, and she's like, Anu, you know, you make it sound all nifty, but you got to talk about things that were hard. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I kind of would rather not because it's a little embarrassing. But let me just tell you guys, as you can see from my, my career path in the previous slide, you know, it's kind of all over the place. It's not a straightforward thing. And there are a lot of things about it that were hard. Um, one of the first things that came to mind, and I'll share the story with you, is my first programming class at MIT. So I was very gung-ho. I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to program. At, I'm at MIT. This is going to be awesome. My first programming class, we worked on a team programming project. And it was a version of chess. So you know, we didn't have to know too much about chess. But um, I, I worked on programming the pieces. And um, so what happened was I worked on the, on the pieces. And when we started playing chess, I discovered that my white pawns moved. I don't know if you can see. They moved up the board, which was good. And then the black pawns also moved up the board and off the board and <laughs> disappeared. So I had never considered that you know, if the white pawns are moving this way, I should program the black pawns to move that way. And it was so embarrassing. I let my team down. We failed the, the project. And it was, it was a huge disaster. And I was like, oh my god, I'm never going to program again. It's, it's so hard. It's so embarrassing. I let people down. It's just stupid. Rah. Um, my TA was really nice. Instead of just failing us in the class and, and having me disappear from the world of programming, he made us do the project again over spring break. So it was a sucky spring break, but it was a really good experience because it forced me to do it again and really learn. And um, it was a really good thing, because it turns out that you kind of need to program no matter what you do in life. And if you, if you get scared and, and run away from it, it might come back to haunt you. And to this day, whenever I'm like programming or putting something out there, I'm like, think about the black pawns. And make sure <laughs> you've dotted the i's and crossed the t's and, and considered every different case that you might need to consider. So the big lesson that I learned, um, or that I've learned so far, is um, how many of you guys have heard this quote? It says, the road to success is always under construction. I think Lily Tomlin said it. And what I love about this is it just forces me to remember that you know, the, the bumpier the road, the more twists and turns it has, the better it is, because maybe that means I'm on the right track, right? And just to extend the metaphor a little further, success might not be a destination. It might just be this journey, this bumpy road that you're on. And um, if things get too smooth and, and kind of straight and boring, maybe you should change paths. Because if you're not out there, if you're not on that bumpy road, you're not pushing yourself to do more, learn more, do the harder thing, You know, life might be too easy. So, so just something to keep in mind. Um, why entrepreneurship? So as I mentioned, Technovation came about um, when I realized that I could bring uh, come up with an idea, pull a team together, and then we could build it and, and bring it to life. I could create my own company, my own job, my own value, all from scratch. And one of the great things about entrepreneurship that I discovered was it's all about, it's all about the team. It's all about the right team. And you get to pick who you want to work with. So that's, that's kind of amazing. It's like one of the best things in life is getting to work with people that you love working with. So, when I started Technovation, um, I was able to team up with Rose and Margaret. And then all these other people joined on. So Tarek, 
with Iridescent helped us, and then Brian from Iridescent joined, and then we had all these mentors. And the mentors who joined us the first year, I am so grateful for, because it was like this crazy idea, and we'd never done it before. And they really took a chance on joining this organization, helping us out with getting food for the events, getting a space for holding the events, getting us computers, getting us facilities. And so it was all about having a team. If I had just thought about like, okay, I'm gonna do this and it's gonna be like this thing and I'm gonna have to do all these different parts of it, it would have never happened. But when I thought, oh, this is gonna be awesome because I'm gonna get my friends to mentor and their friends are gonna join and we're gonna have all these people um, who I love working with come together and do something amazing, um, that, that's what made me do it. That's what made me take the leap and, and keep going at it. And what's amazing now is that we have all these people from Iridescent helping out and scaling the organization. And it's not like any one person could have done this. But as a team, we're able to do like, all, this, uh, all this amazing, huge stuff. So um, why would we want to do technology and entrepreneurship? What I think is great about technology is that it's a vehicle for bringing ideas to reality in a scalable way. So what I mean by that is you, know, you can do something um, just kind of one-on-one, like we're doing Technovation um, as a program. It's, it's great because we have like 50 people in this room, and that's, that's a pretty big impact. Now imagine if we could use technology to scale Technovation in a way that like anyone anywhere in the world could learn programming and entrepreneurship, then that would be like huge impact. And that's one of the things that Iridescent is doing to take Technovation to the next level, is how do we incorporate technology into this so that it can have even more impact. And, and why programming? So programming, I think, is just, it's a great tool that lets you access technology. And it's something that's useful no matter what you do. So whether you're going to be a lawyer, or you're going to be an accountant, or a physicist, or a doctor, you will always need to program. And if you can do some programming, you will just make your life so much easier and, and be so much faster at whatever. So it's just a great tool to have. And why mobile technology? Why are you guys learning to make apps? Well, mobile technology is the ultimate vehicle for reaching scale. What I love about mobile is that it is, it's, it's growing. So it's, it's truly a huge technology. In the next five years, they say that more people are going to connect to the internet via mobile versus PC. Um, it's truly a global technology. I love this picture um, that I found of, of these women in a village with their mobile phones. Um, so they say that there are 6 billion mobile subscriptions, which roughly translates to 87% of the world's population having access to a mobile phone. Um, and what's really great about it as a woman is that it's closing the gender gap. So women getting access to mobile phones uh, is enabling them to run their own businesses, get paid for work, and it's really just changing the way they live all around the world. Um, the other great thing is that the app market is growing. You always want to be part of a growing market as opposed to a shrinking market. So back in 2009, there were $4.2 billion spent on apps. A lot of them um, are still around today. And in 2013, they project that $29 billion will be spent on mobile apps. So that is amazing growth. And then the best thing is, um, if you're running a program for high school girls, girls love their mobile phones, right? Um, how many of you guys love your mobile phones? Yeah, yeah. Don't be shy. You can admit it. I hurt my phone. <laughs> how many of you guys wish your phones could do something that they don't do yet? Or how many of you guys wish that if, if, if only the app that you loved was slightly better? Yeah? So yeah, you're on your way to becoming mobile entrepreneurs, because that's what it takes. You, you know, you love something, but you're like, hey, it could be better. I can make it better. I have so many ideas for how to improve it. So there you go. Um, one of the things that um, people al always wonder about is, how do you know if the app you come up with or the idea that you have, how do you know that's a winner? So one thing that really works well for this kind of, um, this kind of challenge is build a prototype and learn from your users. So for example, Technovation actually started out with a paper prototype. When you're doing apps, people always tell you, build a paper prototype. So that's what I did. I built a paper prototype. What we did was we had, similar to you guys, we had 50 girls come in for an afternoon. And so it wasn't like a 10 week long program, the first version of it. Girls came in for an afternoon. And instead of actually programming mobile apps, they drew out what their mobile app would do on a piece of paper. So each, each girl, or each team of girls, so you can see here like all the different 
um, photos have, have girls standing behind, uh, standing in front of their mobile app idea. So they just drew out what their app would do on, on a piece of paper. It's storyboarding. So it's like the first screen would look like this, and the second screen would look like that. It was totally low tech. We used construction paper and glue, and that was it. And it just took two hours, and we saw how, how the process happened. We saw how girls came up with ideas, how they drew out what their apps would do, how they pitched it. And that was a huge learning experience for us because that taught us that, yeah, this is something that could be interesting. And yeah, let's do this. Let's do this in a big way. So we can do the 10-week program. We can have the programming. We'll have laptops. We'll have phones. It'll be high tech. right? So just start with a prototype and go from there. Um, how many of you guys know Zappos? Zappos, buy shoes online, crazy idea. Back in 1999, people were not buying shoes online. It just did not happen. And then this guy, Nick, who's the founder of Zappos, he was like, you know, I think there's a market for shoes online. And you know how he went about validating the idea? What he did was he put up pictures of shoes on a website. Anytime somebody ordered that pair of shoes, he would go down to his local shoe store, buy the pair of shoes, pack it up in a box, and mail it out. And he just did that to prove that, yeah, people would buy shoes online. It's so simple. I love it. So think about when you're building out your app. You want to get validation. Maybe you're building a science app for your you know, eighth grade baby brother. Or I guess that wouldn't be a baby brother. But you know, you're, you're building some, some science app, and you just want to get validation. Build a prototype. Do, you know, do some way that you can fake it. So, you know, maybe maybe you can like do some animation in, in PowerPoint or whatever, and just like here's what the app would do. Would you use it? People will be like, yeah, I'll use it, or they'll be like, no, I would never use such a thing. And and that's the kind of validation that you can get. Simple, low tech. Um, so one of the things that that they asked me is, why is it great to be a woman in tech? And while I want to be like, it's awesome, sometimes I'm like, no, it really sucks because it's so lonely. There just aren't enough women in tech, and there should be. Um, what's cool is that it's changing. And just the fact that you guys are here um, is, is making it better. So you guys are taking a chance and doing something new. Like you mentioned, I never thought of doing something like this, and, and now I'm doing it. That's going to make it better. And what I think is fun is to be part of the solution. So, so that's why we're here. I, I, I love the fact that um, we're, we're back at Google this year. I remember the very first uh, year that we'd run Technovation, we were out in a cafeteria, kind of out in public. And um, I, was, I was just uh, hanging out watching the girls program. And um, these two guys walked by. And they were like, yeah, they're like, dude, why are there so many women in the cafe today? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's changing. <laughs> Get used to it. So just, uh, you know. There, there's lots to, lots to talk, out, talk about. In the next 10 weeks, we'll get to know each other really well. But I just want you guys to remember a couple of things as you go through the program. So don't be afraid to try new things and learn new things if you fail. And it won't really be a failure because you're trying new things. And if it turns out to be hard, it's OK. Just remember, it's hard for everybody. Um, keep at it. Ask for help if you need it. You have tons of resources, which is what's kind of amazing about the program. And it will get easier. Remember that entrepreneurship is a team sport. Meet lots of new people, learn about them, learn from them, and support them in their endeavors. And you never know, one of these days, they might be the people that you end up starting a company with. Um, and then have fun and technovate. <laughs> and if you have any questions or comments, or if you want to meet sometime, just uh, email me. I uh, would love to, to chat with you guys about your mobile endeavors or your entrepreneurial endeavors.